G'day everyone, welcome to my first how-to video. Uh, I know I said in the first video I made on this channel that I make how-I videos and not how-to videos, but when I built this solar array, uh, I got a fair few questions, um, configuration, wiring, but mainly it was how did you go about mounting these panels without buying any of the usual hardware, which is like um, the Z clamps, uh, rails, that sort of stuff. So my kind of philosophy on it was, I got these panels for $36 each for a 240 watt panel. That's a great deal. And if I'm gonna have to spend 20 plus dollars per panel on mounting hardware, it really takes away from that deal. Um, it's gonna really add up over the 56 panels that I bought. So what I came up with instead was a way of building this, bolting it straight on or screwing it. And um, I didn't want to go ahead and make a, a how-to on the first one because I wanted to make sure it worked. And it's been six months. We've got some you know, decent conditions out here of uh, wind, snow, everything else. And um, yeah, they've been doing just fine. So I figure uh, let's get stuck into a how-to video and um, I'll take you through a little more in-depth all right, so first job is gonna to be to mark out our ground spots and where our um, seven uh, posts are gonna go in. So uh, the overall dimension is 22 feet 10 by nine foot four and a half roughly. And um, yeah, they're just gonna be equally spaced across both of the long ends and then having one pole in the middle because that's where the highest concentration of the dead load is gonna be um, and probably the live load as well. So yeah, let's mark that out. Um, we're gonna go down about two feet and yeah, then we can set our post. Here's our seven holes dug. Um, it took about a month because it kept snowing and I kept having other things to do, but I did hand dig them all and now we're gonna put in the pegs, lay out our string lines so we can make sure we're gonna get these posts in the right spot uh, and then they'll be ready for some concrete. Okay, so now we've got all the string lines set. They're square, they're all the right length, um, and they're gonna guide where we're gonna be putting our posts. I've just got this extra piece of post that was left over from a, a different project, um, but it's the right length for me to use to set into each of these holes and make sure that it is gonna be plumb uh, and properly within the boundaries of the hole. Um, otherwise, I'll have to you know, elongate it on one or two sides just to make it all fit perfectly. Um, so I'll get that all fitted up and then my plan is not to pour the concrete today, um, but to come out one morning on a forecast warm day and um, I'll pick it up from there. All right, welcome to concrete pouring day. Uh, the weather gods have eased up on us. It is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius. Um, and just because the weather out here is nice doesn't necessarily mean the ground isn't frozen. So uh, if you say what in the flame and heck is going on, I have lit very small fires in each of these seven holes just to get that ground up above freezing. Um, I probed it, it was about negative four Celsius, so like mid 20s Fahrenheit. Um, plenty of guys locally that will pour concrete into frozen ground, but I'm not one of them. So uh, we're warming that up um, and then we're also heating up our bags of concrete and um, I am going to put hot water in the mix. So all of that together um, should help to accelerate this reaction, get it cured. I'll also be capping it with insulation. And yeah, that's all we need to do hopefully to get this to set up. So um, let's get stuck into it. And what else is a secondhand George Foreman grill good for? Heating up bags of concrete. Um, they started at negative eight degrees Celsius, been about 30 minutes, we're at 11 now. Gonna try and get them to 20 or 30 each, um, three or four bags, that should do us. I'm also gonna add ready seal to the ends of the posts, uh, and then I'll do it again once I cut them on the top.
right, well that ended up being a bit of a doozy of a day. Um, I had to use a fourth bag of concrete. So yeah, I realized that about halfway in, so I was quickly chucking another bag of concrete on the barbie um, so that we could get that thing up to temp. We got there on the end, insulation's down. Uh, this is gonna sit for about a week and then I will come back and put all the uh, cross members in and then we can start racking up our solar panels. Concrete's had about a week to set up now, so these posts are feeling pretty solid. Uh, it means we can get rid of these braces now and start cutting them to the right heights and angles. Uh, 30 degrees is gonna be the angle on top, and then I'm gonna pull a string line across the front here to get level and cut them all upwards at a 30 degree angle. Um, and that's gonna be the fixed array angle, obviously. Um, we can then rip a 30 degree angle with a table saw onto these ones that are going to be cross members um, and notch the top of the posts to have them sit in um, and get it all nailed down. This is what the frame looks like without any panels on it yet. Um, that main one in the middle is where everything's notched um, and all the perimeter ones just kind of got the, the nails in the end to uh, secure everything. And now we can start breaking up the solar panels. So mounting each solar panel is basically a four step process. The first one is clamping a two by four to the edge so that the solar panel will stay in place. Then you can lift it up and set it there. Next, you'll want to use a multimeter and check you're getting output. And if they're working, then obviously leave it up. If the solar panel is no good, there's no point mounting it. These are recycled panels, so there's every chance that maybe one of them or two of them don't work. But so far they've been good. And then we're gonna drill a pilot hole through both the, uh, the wood here and into the uh, frame of the solar panel and secure that with a screw. And repeat that 13 more times. And we're done, 14 solar panels all racked up and secured to this frame. Um, I'm going to ground the panels just so we don't have any static buildup um, on the frames, but the frames are all touching so they're all on the same potential, but we don't really want a, a potential between the frames of the panels and the ground because that's a shock hazard. So we'll do that real quick um, and then I'm gonna wire these guys up um, seven of them in series, so four across, across the top on the right and three across the bottom on the right. That'll make one bank of seven. Four across the top on the left, three across the uh, bottom on the left. That'll be another series of seven, all connected positive to negative. Um, where they meet in the middle, positives uh, will go into a wide junction to have one main positive, same for the negatives. Uh, and then we're gonna run that into the shed. All right, these are our Y connectors. One's for positive, one's for negative. So uh, we're going to take our four outputs that we have here and turn them into two that in my pocket so um, this one is going to be for the positive so we've got one positive here one positive here so we're going to connect these two just like that now we have one main positive then we've got a negative here and a negative over here and connect those Click, boom. And now we have another negative. So we're left with one main positive, one main negative. Um, that is going to be uh, for this installation about 250 volts and 14 amps. Um, and 
connect those together, run it in, follow code, um, and that's it. Okay, so a few final thoughts on safety and longevity of the system and everything like that uh, is going to be one, grounding these, uh, these frames. That's pretty important to not generate a shock hazard. Uh, it's not gonna be enough to save the system if it gets struck by lightning. Um, it's pretty much toast at that point, but um, yeah, what can you do? Uh, if you see there was a, a bunch of hanging extra cable from those solar panels between the MC4 connectors and the panel, uh, I don't recommend looping those because uh, you have DC current, so it's potential to create an inductive load. So just let those um, not hang, but like follow the frame and staple them. Um, and then the last potential thing, uh, it hasn't been an issue on the other one, but you'll notice there was steel screws directly connected to the aluminum frame of the panels. So we have the possibility of creating um, a galvanic cell. Should be less of a problem with this one because it's gonna be kept dry, uh, but you add moisture in there and if the paint's been stripped, um, then you've got two dissimilar metals in direct contact uh, and we could have some corrosion there. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that. Like I said, there's no signs of it happening on the other one I've already built, but um, that's the downside, I would say, going with this method compared to using the Z clamps or rails or something where all the materials are going to be um, either gapped so there's no direct contact of dissimilar metals or all the same metal. So, is what it is. Uh, for 250 bucks, this will definitely do the job. Uh, and yeah, another 300 bucks, I'm going to enclose it. So, uh, come back for that one if you want to see a little pole barn out of this. And besides that, um, have a good one. I'll catch you in the next one.